So this is the next video in my series of videos on some of the changes that are available in Adobe Captivate 2019 Update 2. We now know, of course, that version number. It's going to update your version number to version 11.5. So look for that when you uh, go to your Help drop-down menu and select Check for Updates. You'll see if that is available to you, um, and you can, of course, download that and install that update. It's completely free to anyone who's already subscribed or purchased Adobe Captivate 2019. So today's, um, today's situation is we're going to talk a little bit about what's called forced navigation. And some of you might know this as, you know, uh, hiding the next button until a user has completed a series of steps. And traditionally, this has been done with advanced actions and uh, user variables. So here's an example that I pulled from an older course that I did. This particular interaction was created with six variables and six conditional actions. Here's how it works. Let's do a preview. So here's an example of what we're talking about here. Uh, I've been doing these sorts of interactions for years. Stakeholders will ask that you provide or chunk out a lot of information to your to your learners. And, uh, you know, in this case here, I have a grayed out next button. In fact, that's just part of the background image. And uh, the actual next button is hidden from view until the users click all of these different buttons to learn a little bit more about this particular topic of interest. And only once they've pressed the final button or all of the buttons, they can do it in any order, does that next button appear. Now, to do this traditionally in Adobe Captivate, um, I had to build a multi-state object. In this case here, the multi-state object contained um, not only different states of this smart shape, but I also added images to go with each of those multi-states just to represent uh, some of the ideas behind the, uh, the topic that's being covered. Uh, and that part is relatively easy. Where it gets more complicated is I have my next button, which as you can see here has been set to not visible in output. And then what I do is I have these six buttons over here and I need to keep track of which buttons have been selected. So I've created a variable for each one of these buttons. And behind each one of these buttons is an advanced action. In fact, it's a conditional advanced action where I'm checking the value of all of these variables. And if they are all greater than zero, only at that point do I show a next button but I still need to keep track of, uh, of the tracking variable, so I increment those by one. And of course, part of the interaction is to change the state of that multi-state object. And of course, down here I do all except uh, you know, revealing the next button if it's an else condition. So a little more complicated. I'm, I need to make six of these. And uh, certainly I can duplicate one and make some changes to all of the rest. So it's not too terrible, but Adobe Captivate 2019 Update 2 now makes that even easier. So I've uh, basically duplicated this slide and I've removed all the advanced actions. In fact, uh, for these buttons, I've set the action to be no action. So I don't need to worry about these buttons actually performing any particular task. So to make this work without any variables or any advanced actions, you need to take four steps, essentially. The first step is to label your slide, and it always has to be called multi-state. Now, of course, if you're referring to the slide labels in your table of contents, you'll have to manually uh, update those entries in your table of contents, but, uh, but make sure that every slide that, that uses this type of interaction is labeled multi-state. The second thing is that we need to label our multi-state object. So right now I'm going to replace the standard label uh, smart shape 999 and, uh, and call this, of course, ms for multi-state underscore 
and whatever you're going to call this interaction. So in this case, we're talking about the impact of of um, of all of these different elements in a workplace environment. So I'm just going to call this impact. So ms underscore impact or ms underscore whatever you want to call this interaction. Uh, and as you can see here, if I go into state view, I've already labeled all of my different multi states accordingly. Um, I'm being very consistent that I'm not using any um, capital letters, um, the underscore is being used as a space, and uh, I'll just need to remember that. And of course, the buttons are already set up to be those same exact words. Uh, so let's exit this state here. Now, the third step is that your buttons actually don't need to have any action applied. In fact, no action is the setting that you're going to want to use for the on success action. And uh, in this case here, what's most important is that they're labeled appropriately. So I'm going to start with the first button here and replace its default smart shape label with uh, the object name, which in this case here is impact. So impact underscore and then the actual multi-state that we want this button to trigger. So in this case here, it's going to be uh, work group underscore conflicts and we'll do the same for the second button here impact underscore damaged careers I can use spaces because it's going to replace those with the underscore anyway and we'll call this one impact disrupted personal lives make sure your spelling is correct because if it's not the interaction won't work impact incidents of retaliation impact lost productivity and finally impact public embarrassment so that's good the fourth step in creating such an interaction is that not only do you need to make your next button not visible in output but you need to label it impact your object name underscore completed so i'm going to hit enter at this point here and what we'll do now is we'll preview this project in html5 so here's the original interaction that uses the six different uh, conditional actions and tracks it using the six different user variables still works quite fine but as you can imagine writing six different advanced actions even if they're all very similar to one another is going to take some time it works well here's the new one created with no advanced actions and achieved just by properly labeling all of your objects so let's test it out great everything works Pay attention to the next button here as I get to the end. Fantastic. So this is an easy way to do force navigation or hiding a next button until a user has clicked all the other objects on a slide. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com, follow me on Twitter at CaptivateTeacher, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.